So while I was recently in a store that sells used Apple products, mostly MacBook, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and some iMacs, etc., cetera, uh, as well as Mac Minis, uh, I came across this. And it was a power adapter that, when I looked at it, immediately set off a bunch of red flags. I, I thought, oh, I should really make a video about this. Just because we're entering the holiday season and at any time of the year, if you're shopping for something, especially if it's on eBay or Amazon or really any on online retailer, even if it is a name brand website you're going to and you're buying the product from there, there's always, there's always a chance. And so what I thought I would do is throw out a smattering of third-party adapters and first-party adapters and walk through ways to be able to detect if a product, whether it's first-party or third-party, is counterfeit. It comes down to a handful of things that really show whether or not the, the, the device is safe. And the reason why I've picked a lot of devices that are like that you see here are they're all devices that are wall chargers that are usually generally very inexpensive to manufacture and they all are things that are easily user accessible You're, you you can plug a USB port or in the case of a USB type C adapter you can plug right into it and touch the output and so I thought this would be a great way to do an introduction of just here are some adapters, let's walk through what you'd find on these adapters to show that they are legitimate and that they're safe. So the first thing to look at, and we'll start with, I'll just pick one, to see what is going on on one of these adapters. And so the, there's, there's five things that I feel are beneficial for anyone with any level of expertise, background, whatever, to look at it, these adapters when you get them with a product and you get one of these adapters stuck stuck in the box with it, you take a look at it and, and get an idea of whether or not it's safe. The first thing to look at on these devices is ratings. And are the ratings correct? As a introduction, two things to look at. It's just like, is the input voltage rating to see if the voltages make sense and so in the United States, it's 120 volts. You can check, you know, internationally is, is mostly 220, between 220 and 240. Generally, these good switch mode power supplies, which all of these are switch mode power supplies, um, are usually rated 100 volts to 240 volts. So if you see something else that's rated besides 100 to 240 volts, it just means that in the context of the other things I'm going to talk about, it might be one of those things that is indicative of a potentially counterfeit or unsafe device. In this case, it's the input rating. We have the input rating. We also have the output rating, five volts, and it's uh, 1800 milliamps or 1600 milliamps DC. Some of the counterfeit devices don't even have the input ratings on them. They'll just say 85 watt adapter or some wattage or go through the next one, which is regulatory markings. All of these products, the ones that are not first party and are third party, this is from a, this is like a general USB power supply that's used for a WinBook tablet that I used to have. I just, the WinBook tablet has ceased to function despite several attempts to revive it. But what has, what has survived is this just two amp, five volt power adapter, which works quite well. And this is made by, this is not made by WinBook. It, it is really tiny type, but it's Asian Power Devices Incorporated. And it has a bunch of regulatory markings on it. So the, the markings that I would, in a vast majority of cases, it's going to be either UL, TUV, or ETL, which I don't have an ETL example uh, in front of me here, but I'll put the logo up so you can see what the ETL mark looks like. The importance being here is not all the fine print about the, in the case of UL, they'll usually have listing, they'll have an e-file number, which you, if you so desire, you can look up that number 
on their website and it will show this part number and show that it's been properly tested. But it's, is the logo a counterfeit logo or is it an accurate logo? And the most common one that's counterfeit in my experience is the UL logo. TUV and the ETL ones, I, I'm sure they have been counterfeit, but they're less, less prevalent. And you can, go to, you can quickly go to the websites of those companies if you see the logo appearing on the device that, you're, you, know, that you have and find what is the current logo style. And if the thing you have has a much older looking logo, it's probably counterfeit and the device is probably counterfeit. And so that's a pretty good way to kind of check um, just by itself, whether or not the device is counterfeit or not. There are plenty of uh, examples of devices on um, Amazon, which I might include, that show, especially the UL mark, in their product listing and it's a UL mark that is maybe a decade old and that's in the case of UL they change their markings often the styling of the marking often enough to kind of thwart this counterfeiting and making it easy for consumers the marking is in, important on a device like this usually the regulatory markings have a marking for investigations for devices that are for the US market, for the Canadian market, and for inter international market for uh, use in the EU, as well as other countries outside of the EU that adopt the particular set of standards that are for a particular device, such as like a power supply. So the next thing, what I call usage markings. I actually I don't know what they're actually technically called. And so usage marking, back to this Bose one, because it has them very large. They, they vary in size depending on what device they're on. They, all these devices should have them. And there's three that are usually in combination with each other for devices such as this. It's the box within a box or square within a square. And that indicates that this is a double insulated device. There is two levels of physical insulation between the mains voltage and your hand or fingers or any, any part of you that comes in contact with this. But you wanna see this box within a box. And a lot of times you might see this on counterfeit devices, but you will only see it, you'll see it by itself and you will see it with other items that I'm going to describe missing. So it's, it's kind of all the things I'm describing should all be kind of in, they're in concert. They're all together as part of a package of a, a good, solid, legitimate first party or third party power adapter. The thing that's usually in conjunction with it is the, the silhouette of a house, which just means it's for household use only more technically indoor use only. You may also see uh, the actual um, words for household use only or indoor use only. That also is fine. Finally, in this usage marking section is generally a Roman numeral that indicates efficiency level. And so this one's an efficiency level of six, which I'll put the table up here for the efficiency levels. And I might do a separate video actually on that, but it's just to give you an indication of how efficient the power supply is. And usually it's done as part of the regulatory testing to give an indication of, okay, how efficient is this power supply? And so this one's six. The anchor one, hopefully that shows up on camera, is six. Uh, let's pick one more. This is a much older Apple ice cube charger and it's uh, efficiency level of five. And does this one have it? Yes, it has an efficiency level of five. The fourth one is the manufacturer's name. So on any of these devices, if it's a first party device or a third party device, they all should have the manufacturer's name on it. We'll go through each one of these so this is a Bose. They actually manufacture it under their own name. 
There's, yeah, I'm sure if you were to go to look up this listing, which you might, I might include as a separate video, actually looking up one of these listings to kind of give an introduction if you wanted to go a little bit further. But for this introductory video, it's really about looking at the, the manufacturing name. So this has got a Bose logo uh, and Bose imprint on the back. And the important bit here is, does the logo really match the style, uh, the style and the, you know, the trademark or whatever of the actual company you're buying it from? So if this was just a regular typeface, I don't know, some font that didn't that wasn't the style of this uh you know bose that, that bose does for their logo then it'd be another sign of hey maybe this is not an actual first party or a legitimate adapter in the case of the ones that don't actually have just the, ma the manufacturer of it on there they may have a third party that does the manufacturing for them so this is a apple adapter designed by apple in california assembled in china a lot of counterfeit ones will say that on their on their packaging but they generally will not include this information which is down here at the bottom which shows the manufacturer and it says Foxlink Technology Limited this is the company that makes this device so while there is no like Apple logo on here I know, I know the larger power bricks do have the Apple logo on them um, you will see a manufacturer sometimes some devices may include the markings on their packaging. Finally, there's the less scientific thing of just looking at the power supply and taking all of the things that I described and looking at them together and seeing, okay, are all these things present together, like I was just mentioning, on the packaging or on the device? in combination, if you go back to the example that I was referring to earlier, you can see that there was really nothing on there besides a description of what the device was. And some ratings, there were some ratings on it, and it had a couple of indications of its compliance, which was a self-declaration and FCC, which is funny because a lot of these switch mode power supplies, I would say, for many supplies, this is actually another bonus, is if you see the FCC logo, a lot, of, a lot of these counterfeit manufacturers like to print the FCC logo on their devices to give another thing that shows that it's compliant with, which in, in many cases for power supplies, because of the frequency that these operate at, being in the kilohertz range, high kilohertz range, maybe four to 500 kilohertz on the, on the upper end. And so I won't get into how those power supplies work, but you'll notice that on all of these devices, the FCC mark is not present. So the Bose one, there's no FCC mark. On the Apple ones, there are no FCC mark. On this Anchor uh, third-party supply, there's no FCC mark found anywhere. So if you get a power adapter and it has the FCC mark on it, again, it's not like, oh, I see the FCC mark, that must mean it's counterfeit. It's possible that it would be on there, but it's, it's taking all of these things in concert together and going, does it have the right ratings? Does it have the, the regulatory markings on them that are not counterfeit markings? Does it have the usage markings that I was describing? Does it have the manufacturer's name? And then does it have any other suspicious qualities on it like the FCC mark that indicates that it may not be a legitimate supply. So why is this important? Why go through this entire video and spend some time looking and getting to know your, your power adapters uh, for the products you're going to either give or receive this holiday season or any time of the year that you're uh, playing around with stuff that's high voltage to low voltage. Various websites, which I'll link to in the description of the article, as well as teardowns, looking at counterfeit power supplies, especially ones that are mains to USB that have no markings on them, maybe just say CE and have the infamous FCC logo on them. And when, there's, when they do teardowns of them and look at the isolation component, that is when you see this double insulation mark on all of these things, the, the, the double insulation is usually provided technically by either the, well, a combination of 
a transformer, which is typically called a pulse transformer, which is a small little transformer that's used in the switch mode power supply. And depending on how it's configured, an optical isolator, uh, an integrated circuit that is providing insulation between primary and secondary for sensing purposes. Those components they find are either not there or are poorly insulated or, or manufactured, or they may be there, but the spacing inside the safety spacing, that is the spacing between the primary side and the secondary side, what's connected to mains and what you touch is not met. And so there is in that case a very real chance of either it being a fire hazard because of all of this or becoming a shock hazard. And it's really something that you can just spend a minute or two looking at many of your power supplies that you're using and just get a feel for, okay, all these things look pretty good. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.